Hello, everybody. This is Drew over here at our Tourist Cinema headquarters, and this is episode two of the Business Origin Story podcast. And with me today is Maisie Miguel, owner of Mam Life, and she has an awesome business producing all kinds of awesome uh, natural, all natural yoga mats, and and she just has this beautiful vision with her company. But how about you introduce yourself, Maisie, and take it away? Hi, everyone. My name is Macy Miguel, and I am the owner and founder of Man Life. A little bit about Man Life is first off, the name starts with my initials. It is Macy Anna Miguel's life. So, my life and healing passed on to you. I started my yoga journey around 2018. I had done it before, but I wasn't as serious as when I started in 2018. And yoga just took me on such a ride. And to be able to have this homecoming back to my body, right? The body, mind, and soul connection gives me chills right now. (laughs) Yeah, yoga saved me. Yoga saved so many parts of myself and allowed healing to take place through mindful meditation practices and moving my body in ways that I had never moved before. And so with my yoga journey, the inspiration to create yoga mats began. And I got to learn a lot about my family heritage. I am Portuguese and my family lineage from Portugal dates back to the 1800s. You know, they founded Sao Miguel Island, which is my last name. There's a lot of culture within man life. And Portugal is the Cork capital. So I really wanted to incorporate cork into a yoga mat. I hadn't really ever seen a cork yoga mat before too. And so, yeah, it's, it really just started with a vision and a dream and here we are now. (laughs) It's beautiful. I I love that. So was it yoga then just getting back into yoga that inspired you to start your business? Yeah. What was like kind of the epiphany for uh, the mats? Yeah. So The business itself started with many different ideas that I was pursuing, but it wasn't in the right alignment. Two different separate ideas. And I I would like to call it failing forward, (laughs) right? I kind of, in a sense, failed um, with those two ideas. And then I realized that I wasn't doing what my passion was. And then so when the light bulb came on around the yoga mat vision, that's when everything really started to propel forward. I realized that when we're in alignment with what we're supposed to do, things will just naturally gravitate and happen in such magical and glorious ways. And so when I was locked in with the yoga mats, everything unfolded perfectly. And I really want to just highlight that entrepreneurship and business, it is such it's not linear. It is this up and down ride that allows us to discover our own truth within. And so, yeah, when it finally landed to the yoga mats, it took about five years in the making from the initial, like I had a dream, Martin Luther King, (laughs) to actual rollout of the yoga mats. And so interesting. There were also a little bit of complications with the inventory for the shipment and it actually delayed my my rollout date. I really wanted it to be on a certain date, but it just so happened that everything came in alignment and I launched my business on my birthday, September 9th. So it's a it's a really big part of me. I I look at my business as my little baby. You know, it's there's so much <laughs> thought that came through and just allowing the process to unfold and trusting, oh, trusting was the biggest thing for me and just surrendering because yes, we're in control to a certain extent, but really it's all about timing and timing is everything. So I think that was one of the biggest lessons that I got to learn is to just trust the process and to be super gentle with myself because entrepreneurship, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to fail forward. We're going to take steps back, you know, and I think sharing the experience and saying, Hey, no, things weren't perfect. I had problems. They were 
ways and, you know, I, I looked at them as obstacles to overcome. So that way it could only allow me to grow more. So that's essentially kind of the beginning process of the yoga journey. <laughs> What was what would you say would be probably in your those first couple of years starting your business? What was like probably your biggest challenge that you faced? Uh, I, you mentioned that uh, not start launching it on a certain date, but aside from that, what was your, a big challenge that you faced? Right, I think the biggest challenge was learning how to navigate my online storefront making sure that shipments were delivered on time and that I was acquiring the right business with the right shipping companies because we want to just make sure that everything flows. And I think overall, the biggest challenge would be just allowing everything to be exactly what it was supposed to be. And part of that just allowed me to open up like a flower, right? I was kind of closed off, but then it allowed me to blossom. And with giving all of that time and energy, you know, the blood, the sweat, the tears, I really do feel like all of it was worth it because here I am now, we're going, I want to say three years into the business and my business has really transformed so many people's lives. And so as much challenges as I had faced, the other side to see that, you know, there's people who are traveling the world with man life on their back. They're going to all these different countries and they're even booking a flight to where the location was where they were able to plant the tree because my business is um, it's incorporated with a nonprofit here. We are just really big on giving with our hearts and then receiving with love. And so with that business motto, I really wanted to incorporate giving back to mother earth. And so with one purchase of a yoga mat, one tree is planted and that's with the nonprofit one tree planted. So there's been some people that have asked where their tree has been planted and I would tell them and then they book a flight and go explore that city with me. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's super cool. yeah, lots of just beautiful expression, lots of beautiful travel and culture. And I think, I really think that we're just getting started here. I I understand that you are now in the United Kingdom, you're in India and Central America, of course. Uh, what, what is on the horizon? Where else? Uh, I, I know you want, you want to have it all over the world, but what's the next country you're really excited to have my life in? Yes. So my vision has always been allowing man life to come into Bali, Indonesia. That is actually where a lot of the yoga teacher training takes place. I mean, it's everywhere throughout the U.S., other countries. My vision was to go to Bali and get my yoga certifica certification. However, I did end up getting pregnant, so my hands were a little bit preoccupied, but it still is in my vision to go to Bali with my yoga mats get that certification and be able to bring that energy to Bali. And so I really think that the sky is the limit. You know, we're, we're not going to put a cap or a container on any of the possibilities. And I really envision man life to be a global awareness of love and unity and peace, like really trying to bring back that 60 era, you know, where we're just, we're here to come home to our hearts and we're here to come home to our true selves, treat each other with love and respect and kindness and really be able to evolve within ourselves so that way we can change the world. Absolutely. I love it. That's a beautiful vision. And, and, and it's definitely true when you, you uh, have that intention, when you're making the product and putting it out there, it really does have that ripple effect, you know, with the customer and with everyone involved, really, with the whole production. So that's beautiful. Uh, you mentioned that you also, when someone buys one of your mats, they also, it includes uh, a cork pen and a love letter and a hemp strap. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, those. I was curious about that. Yes. So I would definitely consider Man Life a high-end luxury yoga mat. It's definitely a yoga mat built with care and intention. 
And so I just kind of wanted to give that extra spice to the yoga mat itself. And I really wanted to incorporate a way to alchemize what the customer was going to experience. So the cork pen was essentially to journal after a yoga meditation, whatever came up, any feelings, you know, just being able to write it down in a journal and and look back on your history and your track record of your yoga journey because it's anything can come up in yoga. There's so many times where I'm in a pose. I I mainly like to do yin yoga. It's more of a feminine flow. We go into a deep stretch and we'll hold it for a couple minutes. And within those couple minutes, you get to realize a lot about yourself, you know, where you're holding mm. stress or tension and, and what comes up. I've cried on my yoga mat. I've burst out with laughter on my yoga mat. You just, you never really know what you're going to get. So the pen was to incorporate that remembrance and just remind you of nice. your journey, right? Um, because journaling has just been such an effective tool within my healing modality. It's, it's allowed me to look back and see the progress of how my life has been unfolding. So the pen was that. And then the love letter. I just, my gifts to people through Christmas, birthdays, anything. I will just get a blank piece of paper and just write my heart out. I don't really buy cards. I just get that paper and that pen and I just write down my heart. And I really wanted to write down my heart to the people who are going to embark on this experience. So the love letter, the pen, it's, it's all part of the intention. And then the hemp strap, that was just an added bonus to carry the yoga mat. It's, a, it's also a natural product. It's made out of hemp and you can also stretch with it. So just a little gift, That's cool. you know? <laughs> That, that's super cool. And and I really like what you said about journaling, because I know for, for me, like every uh, every morning after uh, my meditation, I always journal and it's just so helpful. So that's cool that you include that pen. It sounds like a really nice pen. I can only imagine. Thank you. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely a high quality pen, too. People will come back and just ask, hey, can I have a can I have another pen? I really want it. And I'm like, I'll give it to you. Just here you go, bud. <laughs> Uh, that's super cool and then i i wanted to ask um another uh question uh, about one question i wanted to ask you really quick here is what do you love most about yoga would you say yoga allows us to just be to sit with ourselves. i think one of the most important things that we can possibly do is in the chaos of life you know we're busy when you get to sit on your mat you get to just drop into your body, maybe get out of your mind and into your heart. I think that's one of the most beautiful gifts we can possibly receive because it's called presence, right? It's a present itself to be in presence and to just witness, witness anything that comes up. And, you know, as they say, like, if you have a thought while you're doing yoga, just witness it like a cloud passing by with no judgment you can acknowledge it but the beauty is to just let it pass and and allow the mind to just come home again and it takes it takes practice it's not something that you know i actually i don't want to tell anybody what they can and can't do so to each is their own they can drop in and be fully present so i think that's also another beauty is just allowing what comes up to come up and everybody's experience is different. So that's what I love most about yoga. That's beautiful. I love that Maisie. And, and then I I was going to ask, you know, that, and I I think that's cool that you're bringing everything all natural. You have the all natural yoga mat and everything on the market. There's a lot of synthetic material, like mats and things like that. And, and I know cork is really durable. So I was wondering if you could speak to that a little bit of how, how you're, how how do people receive your mats? You, you know, after they've been doing yoga with your mats for a while, what's their experience been like? That's a really great question. Thank you for for bringing that topic up. What I love most about Mam Life's Quark Yoga mats is whoever is on the mat will not be ingesting the harmful toxins and chemicals that regular plastic yoga mats provide. 
And there's a certain smell to plastic yoga mats as well. All of it just essentially, it, it cuts you off from being centered and connecting with Mother Earth. And when you are on a yoga mat, a man life yoga mat in particular, you're actually more centered and you are completely connected with the core of Mother Earth. So you're receiving downloads that you probably wouldn't receive if you're on a regular plastic yoga mat. And the beautiful thing about my yoga mats is they are PVC free, they are non toxic, non harmful. And if you have a sweaty palm, sweaty feet, or you're in a hot yoga class when the heat's like 103 degrees, most people on their plastic yoga mats, I see it. I see it all over. They're slipping. They're getting triggered because they can't hold a pose. But with my yoga mats, with perspiration, the better the grip you actually have. So you're not slipping and sliding and you're actually being able to completely focus on what position you're in and how to just be fully present, right? It's hard to be present when you're trying to like adjust yourself and you're looking at other people and you're just, so I think it's really important that people understand that the yoga masks that we are using, the regular plastic ones, they're actually really harmful to the environment and they just sit in the landfills for hundreds and hundreds of years. And you know, really, if, if we'll be quite frank, I, I really think the only thing that will allow plastic yoga masks to decompose is if you provide, you know, the mushroom that will eat away a yoga mat, essentially. I don't know how it would be able to just naturally go back into the earth. And with my yoga mat, because mm -hmm. they are made of trees, you could essentially plant it back into the earth. And I it, it wouldn't be harmful. So that's, that's the beauty of all natural baby. <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's all natural. I love that. And I, I was going to ask, what, how do you balance your business and your personal life? And especially now with a baby, what, how, how do you balance and stay motivated? That's a really beautiful question because motherhood and entrepreneurship, you would think that sometimes it would clash but what I found is that having a baby has also brought me back into expanding my business because I can incorporate my child with yoga mats and he gets to learn exactly what mama gets to do and, and how she gets to experience the beauty and, and pursuing what I love. I, I honestly think that they go hand in hand together. He will go to yoga classes with me and he'll sit on a mat and he'll do little stretches and poses. And it's really inspiring <laughs> for other people. They're like, okay, if an 11 month old can do yoga, I can do that too. So I really think that there's this, there's a healthy balance. Obviously there's things that I need to do, you know, business work, finances, you know, when he's sleeping, I'll tackle that, but pretty much when we go to the farmer's markets, when we go to events, yoga classes, as long as children are allowed in the yoga classes, um, he actually brightens up this world with his beautiful smile. And they get to look at a mother and her baby doing what they love, spreading the word of love through yoga. And yeah, it's, it's honestly helped me being a mother. And in fact, my business has actually propelled forward with him in my life so you would think maybe it's it's a little bit contradicting but it's actually been so beneficial mm. so that's awesome that's super cool that you you just ebbing and flowing with it and have that um you know balance able to balance those things you know and uh just roll with it that's beautiful Thank you. two two final questions i want to ask you uh, one is, what do you recommend to entrepreneurs uh, starting out and they want to start in perhaps uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be your line of business, but, you know, what would you recommend to op entrepreneurs nowadays starting out? What is your advice? Mm. So the first thing that came to me in Business 101, they say it's 80% preparation, 20% execution. I'll say that again, 80% preparation, 20% <laughs> I 
<laughs> execution. Execution. So being a mother, sometimes that happens. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> but yeah, essentially that's what happens. You just have to be very prepared. I would highly recommend you to have a mentor, having somebody who has been where you've been quite literally to help guide you throughout this process. Um, I think it's really important to make sure that your taxes are in shape in order, making sure that you have an LLC. That's a really important factor because you want to have a legitimized business. When you have a legitimized business, you're taken more seriously. So you want to prepare yourself as if you're already a business owner, but having a mentor is key. So if you don't know anybody, I would definitely look up some YouTube channels, people who have embarked on this journey before, and also just making sure that you have your finances in order. Part of my struggle was my finances. I had, I had, I thought I had enough, but there were some little, you know, odds and mm. ends that I had to kind of just sort out and and I actually got some loans. So just make sure that financially you're prepared. And if you do have people in your life who are going to support you and honor this beautiful journey, I think you'll be set and yeah, have fun with it. Have fun with it because if we're doing it and we're all stressed out and we're not really making the best of it, it's just going to teach us how to manage our emotions better, right? So even if you are stressed out, mm-hmm. you can't not be stressed out or tell yourself, hey, I'm not stressed out. So really honoring your emotions, but trying your hardest to manage and regulate your emotions if you're stressed out. Take some breaths. Drop into that body space, you know, really breathe it out. And and if you need to come back to it, take however much time that you need because the beauty of entrepreneurship, like I said, it's not linear. It's like this up and down thing. So yeah, having fun with it. And and most importantly, being gentle with yourself and having patience. Yeah, absolutely. You just remind me of a quote I heard the other day. Uh, I was watching this uh, a YouTube video uh, about this from this. Uh, one, you know, I just came across this really cool YouTube video on uh uh, pretty much the same thing about entrepreneurship and how do you you grow your money, and and the, the quote that she used that I thought was really cool is it's like a heartbeat, you know, like on a heartbeat monitor where it's like it goes like this and it goes like this. And she said that we want it each time it dips to go a little bit higher, and so that way you're steadily going up, you know. And uh, I, f- I feel like that's uh, important to keep in mind when you start a business because most people think it'll just be like linear. And are not really expecting those those valleys, and and if they do hit a valley, they they freak out and they're like, oh, there's something wrong with me. And it's like, no, no, that's just this is part of the course, you know. Yeah, you said it spot on. Absolutely. That's that's awesome. And then I wanted to my my uh, f- final question before we wrap out out of here is, um, what is the future of man life? Where are you hoping to to take it? What's your vision for the next uh, couple or few years? The vision for man life is expansion. So we're talking about a studio where we can teach yoga classes, where we can have the yoga mats there as a storefront. They are located in different storefronts across the country, um, San Diego, Las Vegas, Colorado. So also wanting to expand more east you know i'm i would love to land some yoga mats in new york and new jersey like let's let's go coast to coast um yeah there's there's a lot of beautiful things coming in the future and already here right now so i would definitely say getting a studio not only just for yoga but for women's circles and retreats there's so many beautiful things that we can explore and embark on so it all starts with the vision. And if we can see it in our mind, we can hold it in our hand. Oh, that's beautiful. That is very true. Yeah. It's like my, uh, my, my business mentor says, she says, um, she says, if you can uh, speak it, you can have it. But if you can't speak it, then it won't happen. <laughs> so I was like, well, it's, it's very, very, very true. Oh, oh, yeah. And then my my last question for you, uh, Maisie. So where, if people want to learn more about MAM Life, they want to find you online, what's the best way to do that? Yes. So on all platforms, 
Mam Life. Um, their social media is Shop Mam Life. And also my storefront online is www.shopmamlife.com. So you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and you can learn more about our story through the website as well. That's beautiful. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Maisie, for uh, uh, coming on the podcast and sharing your story. It is lo- uh, just absolutely lovely and delightful to learn more about your story and your business and where you're planning to take it. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate you and your time. And thank you for allowing me to be on your podcast. This is uh, such a beautiful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I can't wait to, to see how it's going to turn out. But uh, thank you again, everybody tuning in. <laughs> And we'll catch you on the next episode.